Welcome to Prosthetic Effects. Today we're going to demonstrate the application of prosthetic pieces to the face. So first we're going to start with our prosthetic piece. This is prosthetic gelatin. We have left the flashing on there and we're just going to seal it up with a bit of Zeltex. So we just dab the Zeltex on the back. What this does is this creates a barrier from the heat and the sweat of the skin uh, from melting the piece because the piece is very sensitive to moisture as well as heat. We cleanse the face. We're going to use the Talesis 5 silicone adhesive, uh, which is a good adhesive for anything. In this case, it is a prosthetic gelatin adhesive. We have mixed the uh, adhesive with 50-50 uh, with its thinner, and we apply it to both the skin, and we will apply it to the piece as well. So now we're applying the Talesis to the back of the prosthetic piece. The Zeltex is dried. We're applying it to the back of the piece, and the, we're letting the two uh, surfaces, the contact surfaces, dry out. And we've done a little measure beforehand. We know exactly where we're putting it. And then we do the application. We start at the center and work outwards. We're try trying not to get any kind of wrinkles or any kind of uh, malformations in the piece so that it sits nice and flat on the skin surface. Again, we notice that we've left the flashing on. The reason why we do this is for handling. Uh, it helps us create a better blending edge once we melt it off. And we're about to do that. We're using witch hazel to melt off the gelatin. It always helps to warm the witch hazel just a bit. Uh, that uh, creates a faster melt. And then we just brush it on like this. So the flashing helps us handle the piece. As w and to pull it on as well as to create a nice smooth blending edge. So the witch hazel dissolves the edge, the thinnest part of the edge, and we're just using it to work it down. We're, we're starting from top and working to bottom and letting it drip in again, keeping the witch hazel nice and warm. Very good. So we have a nice clean blending edge there. So it lays flat so we don't have to do too much work in the patch. So then what we'll do is we'll use a little bit of what they call Bondo. And this is the Prosade cream paste. So what we've done is we've used the appliance uh, and the edge of to create a second. So the, uh, the edge is we've pulled up just a bit and we're going to use the Bondo to create a more 3D effect around that edge. Now we're gonna use our Real Creation palettes. We've taken note of uh, the skin coloring uh, on our subject. Um, our piece was, our prosthetic piece was pre-colored, but we're also going to just blend in some more, some more base color so that we can move, move the whole thing together. So we've mixed up the Real Creations palette. We're using a, s a sponge to apply. Now this is accelerated time a little bit. We have, uh, we have to make sure everything's good and dry. We start to do the pre-color on the cuts. You can see some of the whiteness, some of it is still drying. So pre-color the depth of your cut. Usually uh, we force the look so that the darker is in the depth of the cut. And then it comes to lighter red. So from a blue to, uh, or a plum to a red, that will create for you a illusion of a deeper cut than you would naturally have. And now we're just filling in the other cut that we made with just with the edge of the prosthetic. And we come in with a number of different colors uh, and looks. Now this is Pico Resin Glass. Uh, the Pico Resin Glass will embed into one of the cuts so that it looks like it's a shrapnel wound, broken glass or, or something like that. So again, we measure it out. We use our telesis. We paint our telesis in, and then we paint the telesis on the other side. We ensure that there is some drying time, and then we stick it in. So here we have our piece of glass sticking out of our wound. Just an added little bit of, of uh, reality. So what we're doing here is we've done pre-coloring on the cuts. We've done a base color to try and blend together uh, the base of the prosthetic with the skin tone. Um, what we will do after this is we will come in, uh, we will add more detailing, more shaping with our color to the cut itself. And then we will also come in and we will add more shaping and color texture 
to the piece itself to make sure that it all blends together seamlessly. Here we have Real Creation's Fresh Thick Blood. It's a blood jam, which we use, again, for a 3D texturing effect. It just adds that little extra bit of meatiness to uh, the cut that we're doing. And again, because its color, uh, its color differentiation and opacity is different, it just adds that other layer of effect to what we're doing. And we're just smoothing it in again with our palette tool. Now we're just adding a bit of our Bleeding Art Industries blood to that mix. So this is a good thick blood, and we're trying to get it so that it runs and drips in what would be a natural way to how, if uh, the person was standing, how the blood would run off the face. Now this is a very quick job. There's some seam edges that we haven't actually addressed. But in this case, what one can do is, if, I if it does have to be a very, very fast job, one can hide these seams also with blood. So as the blood is moved in and around the, the wound and then outside, one can h do a very fast job of hiding the, the prosthetic edges uh, if you don't have time to do the proper job. Now, as with any of the makeup applications, the first uh, goal to take it off is just a nice hot cloth with a little bit of soap in it. So, nice massage. So we get everything heated up and warmed up and then move it around and begin to take any pieces, like the piece of breakaway glass, start to take all the pieces that will come away with water off. Just a nice, careful pulling away. We don't want to rip any skin or anything like that, so we just take what the hot cloth will get. And in this case, the cloth, cloth took off most of the makeup. Then what we will do is come in with the Talesis remover and we will begin to remove the glues from off the skin surface. The glues tend to hold to the skin surface really well and if not properly cleaned, we'll then pick up other bits and pieces and will <laughs> give quite a gray look to the skin. Here the Prosade remover will remove all the Prosade cream paste, which is what we were calling Bondo. Uh, it will also remove the Zeltex fairly well and we're just cleaning that all up. Again, starting from one side, moving down to the other, not abrading the skin too much. Thank you for watching Bleeding Art Industries Television.